this privilege under Rule 59M, I will need your guidance on how it can be processed. When we are debating a statement on school fees, <clears throat> I did raise issues, I don't have to repeat them, but particularly about Kanyareru Primary School and other schools operated by the President. The presiding officer asked me to present evidence. I reached out to him on the following day, but I was surprised that he, as I was assembling evidence, my submission was expunged. And not only was it expunged, but one of the colleagues who raised the point of order was on Twitter celebrating, actually accusing me of bigotry. The Honorable Kazwenje, I hope that is how he pronounces his name. So the point of privilege, Madam Speaker, is whether I will now be given, or I can proceed even now, and uh, substantiate the matter that I presented here, or I wait for the presiding officer who, has, who expanded, because I have more evidence than I had actually promised to bring. <laughs> and Madam Speaker, that evidence is here. So if you allow me, I will straight away come and lay and, and present it. So do I, I need your guidance? Because my reputation cannot just be uh, damaged just like that. Anyway, that is if, uh, if some people have a reputation. Can, 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 <coughs> can you do that when the presiding officer is here who handled it? Because I don't know what it was. I have not been briefed, and the fact that it was expunged, it is not in any record, so I can't read it anywhere. Uh, Honorable Laibi. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Madam Speaker, <laughs> Madam Speaker hey, I, want to, I want to thank you. In the Honorable Members, First, listen, Ibra is on. I wanted to invite you to the judgment of Constitutional Court and the Supreme Court. During the processing of the Majesi Bill, the one that uh, made Mr. Museveni life president, the argument <clears throat> by those of us who went to court was that, uh, Madam Speaker, on matters of, of constitutional, there must be consultation. And not just consultation, but adequate consultation. Court ruled, and the Parliament can look at the judgment, that matters of constitutional nature cannot be rushed, even if it is one sentence. I was inviting you, Madam Speaker, with humility, that you consider extending the time at least uh, Honor, are you I, I done? was inviting you madam speaker okay information uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, right right no yes can I conclude, Madam Speaker? Can you conclude? Um, and and right, when I'm right talking now, about within 45 days, 45 days can even be one day. Within. So if you're talking about the date, that one, it is within 45 days. What I only see sense in it is the issue of Constitutional Review Commission, which Attorney General is going to respond to. Is he here? Can allow me, Madam Speaker, to conclude. The Attorney General can uh, aggregate these issues and answer them. I have had, I haven't looked at all the issues challenging the passage of the anti homosexuality. But I have had those who went to court, I even questioning the time within which it was passed. Uh, as I said, I haven't looked at that, but the Attorney General 
um, can help. So uh, uh, as he does, Madam Speaker, I am pleading with you to give these bills enough time. We can pass them next year. The, the, the roof is not coming down. The levels of trust between the executive and parliament. I have listened variously to the passionate submissions by the Honorable Opendi over her desire to submit and have space for a constitutional amendment. If you look at the constitutional amendment bill and the memorandum attendant to it, it speaks to the intentions of amending particular legislations that have roots from the constitution. And if you go constitutional strictly, I'm very sure the land attorney general would agree with me that these constitutional amendments actually shake the core of the form of governance, which is decentralization. They actually go to the core of the form of government. Increasingly, the amendments actually are a migration from decentralization to centralization. Which is why members are discussing the possibility of having the constitution amended in a consolidated bill. And now that we have accepted to go piecemeal, no, I'm submitting from uh, uh, what the right honorable speaker has guided the house about. And at the end of the day, probably a question will be put. Will the Honorable, the Land Attorney General, give this House an indication of the intentions of government in the interim by bringing this particularly? And then what became of the peripheral promises for wide-ranging constitutional amendments fight a constitutional commission? Because what the Honorable Suman was uh, talking about is very clear. Is government intended and intentioned on causing serious or amendments to overhaul the constitution to accommodate the wide-ranging changes in the country, in the economy, in the form of governance? Because these um, piecemeal amendments, for me, are shaking the form of government, the form of governance with the decentralization, right, Honorable Speaker? And I'm very sure implementation will be somehow problematic, right, Honorable Speaker? Thank you. The on constitutional is on merging Equal Opportunity Commission and Human Rights Commission. Thank you. And, and what is said, that because they perform the same jobs, so it is a duplication. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. If you look at what is in the, in the amendment, the object of the bill. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. In that case, it doesn't stop the Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs from bringing a comprehensive uh, amendment later, while it also doesn't stop us from proceeding with this one. Right Honorable Speaker, the reason I'm saying this, yesterday, all these members, we received messages from people, anonymous people in this country, telling us to reject this constitutional amendment. No wonder we are having this kind of discussion. It is because somebody, this, yes, we sent messages to all of us. However, Right Honorable Speaker, I received, I can read for them for you. However, Right Honorable Speaker, on the question of timing, it is right Honorable to members, this. Honorable members, can you sit? Honorable members, can you sit? Honorable members, Honorable members, Honorable members, we are now going into the merits of the bill before the bill is even presented. Now, you've started debating the bill. You've not allowed it to be, uh, to be presented, to be laid on table, and you're debating it. Nathan, what do you have? Thank Honorable you. members, can you sit? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I recall, and I stand to be corrected, I recall we had 
a committee which I chaired concerning the same matter. But incidentally, the cabinet ignored it. They are saying they have a report which informed them to come to this. I would love to see Honorable Mururu Mukasa giving that report to each committee so that the committees can be informed. We have been here long, I'm sorry. Honorable to members, once we have the reports laid on table, Honorable Mururu Mukasa must give his report that formed that decision. And actually, he came to my office today and asked that he wants to meet all the chairpersons of all committees before they go into looking at the what? At the reports. So that is the time you should get the report yes. from, and from Honorable Murule. Additionally, Speaker, may I must thank you for having allowed to unpack. You can imagine what would have happened here with the omnibus. We have been here longer. We sat here and we are hurried to privatize. We sat here up to midnight privatizing. We said we should not sell UCB unanimously. Somebody said he would sell it on a Sunday, and he sold it on a Sunday. I don't want us to go back to where we were. Some of you, when we are sleeping, some of us don't sleep. We think about this nation. We think, while you sleep six hours, I sleep three, but I think. So what I am saying is, I don't want us to be driven to come to a stage now where we are going, we want another UCB. We want Uganda Airlines, Uganda, Uganda Railways. You sold them when we are here. So, Madam Speaker, I appeal to ministers who are really colleagues I respect. I respect. Because Honorable Murum Kasa, I was with you here. And Mr. Honorable Timmy was here. We branded. And here we are regretting. I don't want us to go that, way, that side. Let us Honorable go members, through. Honorable members, this house made the acts. This house has the powers to either repeal the act, reject, or march. That time has not reached. We are going to reach that time. This, this, there is a procedure matter. This house still, but I want to hear from first the Attorney General. Let these members be given ample time to go through this, consult widely. By the time we come here, we are unanimous. Otherwise, so had we said we are not going to consult? No, ma madam. No, I am asking you, Nathan. I am trying to say, for example, if you had not unpacked, what would have happened here? Honorable <laughs> Mururu Mkasa was rushing to have this bill gone. We would want to see our workers who are laid off. Are they paid? Will they be paid? Is the money catered for? So many things have to be considered. Madam, this is not something simple. We are trying to look to, at these things, but I can say we need to go slow and in phases so that we can have this country moving forward. I thank you. There is a procedure matter here. Thank you, yeah. Right Honourable Speaker. About what you don't know, what you have not received. Instead we of receiving the, the bills first, then you either accept or reject your... your right Honourable Speaker. We appreciate the situation in the House today. But, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, you agree with us and with me that the promises of government, once not respected, they will cause suspicion from the people of Uganda. And this being a platform of the people of Uganda have rights to raise concerns from the previous promises if they were promising to have the constitutional amendment done in a manner that is acceptable, that is consultative, 
then this is really reneging on our promises. Madam Speaker, this country, some of the people, is a dining table. But some of us is our motherland. We have to make sure we tell these people that we are all in consonance to protect the interests of Ugandans. When we rush because we want to appease, there is one professor, one, one philosopher who said, the triumph of the evil, the only triumph of evil is when good men sit down and do nothing. Yes. Madam Speaker, you are one of the people in Uganda that have stood up to defend the people of Uganda. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the sentiments in the House, in my view, I construct them twofold. One, there are entities that we shall need to match because we have duplicated roles along the way. There are entities that we want to give a second thought about because of their critical nature and everything therein. So members are not saying this or the other, but one, they're saying, can we have adequate time to exhaust all of these issues? That's number one. Number two, what we'd like to hear from government, and it's good the Attorney General is coming, hopefully he will commit, we want something comprehensive so that we deal not with these issues piecemeal. Because once we handle them piecemeal, it, it becomes problematic. <clears throat> can we have commitment on when they can have something comprehensive that we get to discuss generally, and then we determine how we move. But this piecemeal, this, the other, and so on, it's, it's not very smooth, right, Honorable Speaker? So, so you're saying, love, you're saying that the margin of equal opportunities and human rights should not be done before we have a compre comprehensive one? Oh, now you're shouting. Oh, you handle this and he makes a commitment that we are going to bring a comprehensive. Right, Honorable Speaker. I, I, I like you guys for, for making noise. I know some of you know where National Theatre is. <laughs> this is a house for intellectual debate. Let's debate and agree. Right, Honorable Speaker, I don't in, intend in any way to usurp your duty. But uh, the eyes seem to have had it. Not to the eyes, I'm talking but, to the um, rope. I, I, like I said, Honorable Speaker, the, the sentiment is we get to deal this, with this comprehensively. I think it does not do any harm once we handle it comprehensively. Let government commit. When are you bringing this comprehensively? And then we, we deal with it. Uh, Attorney General. Mine is also a procedure. Mine is a procedure. Attorney General, is this? Uh, Madam Speaker, I wanted to draw your attention to Rule 128, which you can read together with Rule 121 and also Rule 25. And I'll justify my submission. In this rule, on first reading, if you read both sub Rule 1, up to four. My literal interpretation is that once a bill has been placed on the other paper and called, it must be read for the first reading. And any other discussion will come thereafter, including the committee returning the bill, rejecting it, or advising it to be modified either way. That is my interpretation. When you look at Rule 25 in determining order of business, you are required also to give priority to the government business. But after that, you are required to give directions on how other members that had queued up behind the government, their business can be handled. And my understanding is, Madam Speaker, when this rule is, uh, is commanding that the bill should be read and we must accept it. This House cannot refuse to entertain any matter brought by government. And then uh, after we can make a decision on it, 
either way, uh, either accept or reject. So the I, I, I matter, wish I wish everybody would be thinking like Honorable Dur. So, so, Madam Speaker, I wanted to the procedural matter is that uh, one. Let's receive the bill as the rules provide, as the rules command, not even provide command, and then and then you guide the members who have queued, like the Honorable Sarah and the rest, with their private how to proceed with the guidance from the Attorney General to go to the committees. But before we do that, we want a commitment from you on the com review commission. Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable, Commission. Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I can report without any fear of contradiction that my colleague, the Honorable Minister of Justice, has collected to date, I think, 73 proposals for amendment. I can also report that he has instructed the Law Reform Commission to collect them and look at their effect on the various other parts of the Constitution. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, that process is ongoing. It's ongoing right now, and I know even Right Honorable Mao, rather Honorable Mao, met some members of Parliament last week who were there discussing some of the Constitutional Amendments, and I know he has continued to meet several others. So Right Honorable Speaker, what I can confirm is that the process is being undertaken and we shall come back to the House at the earliest to report on the same. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. So who is the same procedure? You're just admiring charity. You say it. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I have not said anything since okay. I died in this House. Uh, it was, the, it the, was the Samuju. The, the, the only what I have is whether my good friend Jenom, you know, but we never attend the committee any time. Oh? I only pray. Oh? My good friend, he has heard his name, Madam Speaker. Okay. <laughs> I wonder whether we never attend she, the committee. She's a, com she's a member of ICT and she attends. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I am on designation, not on procedures. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable yes. Members, pursuant to Rule 1581 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I hereby redesignate um, the following members. I hereby redesignate the following members. Re, they were already designated. Uh, Hon Honorable Lieutenant General James Mujira from the Committee on National Economy to the Standing Committee of Public Accounts, Commissions, Statutory Authorities, and State Enterprises. Honorable Major General Sam Kavuma from the Committee on Public Accounts, Central Government to the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, Local Government. Honorable Major General Henry Masiko from the Committee on Public Accounts, Local Government, to the Standing Committee on National Economy. Honorable Dr. Victoria Nekesa, from the Committee on Public Accounts, Commissions, Statutory Authority. Right Honorable Speaker, in accordance with Rule 128, of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Constitution Amendment Bill 2023 be read for the first time. I beg to move. And right honorable speaker, the Certificate of Financial Implications is hereby attached to this bill. The Constitution Amendment Bill 2023. Item 4. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. The issue I am bringing, this is a bill, the Constitution Amendment Act 2023, 
And right honorable speaker, ideally we have a Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, but it is the Minister of Public Service that is bringing this constitutional amendment. So right honorable, honorable speaker. Honorable members, honorable members, honorable members, we are now bringing any trivial issues. Pursuant to Rule 129 of the Rules of Procedure, I now refer the bill to the Sectoral Committee of Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. And uh, as earlier on guided, the rules of 45 days stands. Item 42. Right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable, Honorable Silas, it is unfortunate that you don't have cows. It is people who look after cows who can shout that uh, my cow come back. But uh... right, Honorable Spe Speaker. In accordance with Rule 128 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Arbitration and Conciliation Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I beg to move. The, 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 the bill is referred to the Committee of Legal and Parliamentary Affairs and... Uh, should be reported back according to the rules. Item, yes. item then, for always giving equal opportunities as per the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. I have been processing a bill as a private member, the National Legal, Legal Aid Bill. Aid. Right now, Speaker, this bill was referred to the committee, the very committee that you have referred two bills to. And I'm that date it was given. I beg that you allow me to finish I've this I've referred three, not two. Yes. And now, the committee seems to be overloaded. They failed to bring my work for more than eight months, but we are giving them more work. Is that it procedurally proper that you first ask the chairperson of the committee to come and explain, because I represent the people of Uganda, what has gone wrong? Have we decided to go selective in the processing of bills in the House? I feel frustrated. Right, Honorable Speaker, can the committee come live and be live and talk of the truth? Honorable, Honorable Silas, Honorable Silas, I appreciate your, your frustration and we are with you. But can we also hear from the chair first? Maybe the chair came and asked for an extension or whichever. Uh, chair, because I remember at one time they came and sought for an extension. was the seconder to that bill. The challenge has come from the Learned Attorney General. In fact, it's the office of the Learned Attorney General that has been opposed to our bill, creating all forms of obstacles. Even when we came here, it is the Attorney General that raised all sorts of technicalities, denying the people of Uganda the benefit of a very good bill called Legal Aid. So right on speaker, the Attorney General evidently is not in favor of legal aid. If the meeting okay. is to happen, right on speaker, that okay. meeting should be chaired by another office, not the office of the Attorney General, because they've been opposed to this bill. That's why Honorable, it was given to the committee. Honorable it's members, problem. Honorable members, Honorable Duru is about to stand up to say you're discussing a bill within another bill. So let's move on with the bills that are on the floor first. And sports. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, in accordance with the Rule 128 of the Rules of Procedure of this Parliament, I beg to move, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Rationalization of Government Agencies, the Education Sector Amendment Bill. 2024 be read for the first time. 
can you lay for us the, the, the bills one by one? I want amendment of Higher Education Students Finance Act 2014. Act 2 of 2014, lay that one first. It is, everything is in here, Madam Speaker. Okay, read them one by one. Madam Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the amendment of Higher Education Student Financing Act 2014, Act 2 of 2014. I also wish to lay on the table the amendment of the National Library Act of 2023, 20, 20, Act 2 of 23. Right when I was speak, I also want to pray, I, I beg to lay amendment of National Curriculum Development Center Act, Cap 135. I beg to lay. Honorable uh, members, the, you, the, the, the certificate of financial implication is also attached, and I want to lay it on the table. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Honorable Speaker. members, Honorable Muingo has his bills together, stapled together. He has laid the three bills. For me, what I wanted him to do was to read bill by bill, but they are stapled together, and he has laid them on the table. And, and to that effect, therefore, I refer it to the Committee of Education and Sports and the rules should be in conformity. Next. Item. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. So who is the same procedure? You're just admiring charity. You say it. Madam Speaker, I've not said anything. Madam Speaker, I've not said anything since I okay. had this house. Uh, it was, was same with you. The, the, the only word I have is whether my good friend, you know, but we never attend a committee any time. Oh? I only pray. Oh? My good friend, he has heard his name, Madam Speaker. Okay. I wonder whether we never attend she, a committee. She's a, com she's a member of ICT and she attends. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I am on designation, not on procedures. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, pursuant to Rule 1581 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I hereby redesignate um, the following members. I hereby redesignate the following members. Re, they were already designated. Uh, Hon Honorable Lieutenant General James Mujira from the Committee on National Economy to the Standing Committee of Public Accounts, Commissions, Statutory Authorities, and State Enterprises. Honorable Major General Sam Kavuma from the Committee on Public Accounts, Central Government to the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, Local Government. Honorable Major General Henry Masiko from the Committee on Public Accounts, Local Government, to the Standing Committee on National Economy. Honorable Dr. Victoria Nekesa, from the Committee on Public Accounts, Commissions, Statutory Authorities, and State Enterprises, to the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, Local Government. I beg to designate right honorable Thank speaker. you, thank you. Can we have independence? Independence. 